Howdy. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Friendly George Podcast. We've <laughs> done again. Sorry, but Look at how that are you? Beautiful angle. Go again. Just call me Tarantino. It took me a year to realize that if the camera is straight on, you look like you're in a snuff film. <laughs> but is that true? Do you think? Do you guys think that this camera angle is better? Thoughts. Should we give props to Miss Love? Anyone or? that thinks that that doesn't look sexier than is that, then they just haven't seen enough films, frankly. <laughs> All right, like always. Look, it definitely to the does. Show. But the thing that makes it look more snuff filmy now is I thought that the set would be better if we cleaned it up. <laughs> well, if you're into snuff films, it does look better. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does just look like. Wait, uh, why is it not clean? Hey, also, guys. Are you excited to see Miss Love kill an eel? Let's just get a general feel oh, for that. How do you feel about that? I'm feeling good. If you, I can speak only for myself. Ali is super but quiet. I'm Thank you for good. letting me know. How about now? That's your fix it. Um, are the volumes good for everyone else? <laughs> sets, Hashtag sets. Ali Car. Well, no one fucking did that GoFundMe page. You're all full of shit. So <laughs> Ali no car. Still Hashtag no car. Hashtag Ali Car. Fuck. Ah, dude, the, everyone. Dude, like, how, how good's this tag? Ali Kaka. Yeah. Wait, I don't get it. Ali like Ali Baba. Baba. Oh, okay. No, it's still not good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like Same. Right. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, if it's getting me a car, I'm, I'm okay with it. So, like always, uh, bring us your questions for the pre show. Jordan's here. Miss Love's here. I'm here. Uh, I will fund a car if Ali gets Allianz. <laughs> Allianz. Damn. <laughs> All right, fine. You got it. You got it. You uh, will get Allianz. I love our rooms. audience. Uh, Muhammad Ali. All right, well, well where's the questions? Uh, let's see. I've got a question for you guys. We are going ahead with this coffee brand. What do you think about Stooge Brews? Hmm? I think it's pretty classic. What do, let's see what you asking me. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, let's just call that. We we could go on with uh, Yulmaz's shit. What about that? Is no? <laughs> well, he's smiling. Yulmaz's he's smiling. Shit. I suppose that's a. Is Yulmaz a goat? <laughs> Dude, if you if you called it that, it would be the most epic and most sim- simultaneously the most epic and the most stupid thing in the world. I think we might have to go with it. <laughs> Yulmaz's shit. No one's gonna drink it. <laughs> That's the problem. They'll buy it once as the joke because you couldn't bring yourself to drink it. You'd bring it to your lips and every time it's like, I know it's just a joke. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I guarantee you. Boys, the internet connection is pretty shit today. So is it? Why? Um, do we know. zap them with magnets that we're again? we're like on danger the whole time. And for What's those of danger? you saying Jordan's camera isn't uh, on focus, I'll fix that. Thank you. Uh, well, look, at least you got the Tarantino-esque angles. Stop complaining about, like, don't be a half glass empty person, you know, like look at the positives here. We figured out that if we put the camera on an axis, it looks better than straight on. I think that's something to be celebrated. Look at all this. Look People like up. it. <laughs> look at you, such a boomer. Look at all this. They're shaking. Lazy beans roasting away. That's my song. God, they're geniuses. That's my song. <laughs> You're all very clever. Lazy Do you know that? Beans roasting. <laughs> all right, we'll make that the official jingle. <laughs> Lazy <laughs> beans roasting away. Give me your massive shit any day. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Holy I, I, shit. Look. Lazy beans roasting away. Ali really thinks that we should go with Stooge Brews, but my vote is for Yilmaz's shit. <laughs> Dude, you got to start shouting out the names. You realise half the reason people go onto Twitch is the, the chance that we'll be like, uh, Barbie169, yeah, nice. you gotta, you got to give them preps when they say that. Lazy Look, I, that's beans. a really good suggestion. Um, noted. Okay. I don't know if it's going to end up doing it. I'll <laughs> That's probably just go back and be like, yeah. All I ask is that you try. That's all I'm asking. And that's all you can ask from anyone. That's a good lesson for life. It is. Life. I mean, subscribe today. Uh, it's. Stooge has more market appeal. Stooge has more market appeal. That's yes, what we're getting. That's at. true. Is shit, eh? <laughs> 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 Who would have thought? Well, this is why we've got you guys here. Hey, stop shitting on Stooge. I think shitting particularly on when Dude. you know what's coming next. What? That we can't tell our audience just yet. I know. But what's let's good. just say a Even. certain someone has bought rights for the word <laughs> stooge. So we've already decided what the brand is. We're just flogging a dead horse. That's a different thing altogether. 
But we can still change the name for the Oh, okay, brand. okay. So you can still do Yilmaz's. You can't do that. If anything, you could do like Yilmaz's Turkish blend, something like that. And that's a euphemism for shit. Yilmaz's You're just, you know, you know, you know, you know what you are. You know what you are. You know what you are, dude. You're Homer in that episode of The Simpsons of. And we roll him up in a carpet and throw him over a bridge. <laughs> that's you with this Turkish shit thing. That's what's going on right now. But don't you think oh, that it kind name, of has a- uh, They're saying name it Stooge's Stool. Why? What's that? Stool means shit. <laughs> stool means stool shit. Stool shit? Yes. Yeah. Why didn't anyone tell me that? You didn't know you that? Probably never I thought they you shit on. You've <laughs> lived your whole life without knowing that? Yeah. Well, yeah, apparently so. Holy so crap. I'm glad for this like uh, impromptu tutorial. Thanks for giving like, back. As if we need Swinbourne University. <laughs> <We've got laughs> We've got all the education. How good's the ad for Swimborn? Just like, oh, that's nice. Just like, yeah, that's not a paid actor with a blurred Mm, face. Yeah, mm. And also, uh, don't know if uh, one of the guys that was kicked off Saturday Disney before it went defunct is the best example of success in careers (laughs) to advertise the fact that this is supposed to get you a job. I was watching some of his show reels the other day. Yilmaz's Turkish Delight. And... Sorry? Sorry, no, no, go on. No, 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 no. But in, but I want to keep the audience engaged for the pre show. No, 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 no. let's keep this going. Comments like, oh, yeah, I you're not talking. The, I know, I know. I thought the pre show was about us. Keep hey, it going. That's not bad, though. Yilmaz is Turkish delight. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. I, Actually, if we make it a Turkish blend, I don't know though. if we can use Turkish delight for yeah, copyright reasons. Beautiful. No, beautiful. Turkish delight is. That is not copyright by Cadbury. Mm. No, but, but it might be copyrighted by Turkey. No. What? They can't afford copyrights. Yeah. What? Their president with his thousand room palace is going to get snippy about us making a couple of bucks. It really is like when people just, when you go to Paddy's Markets and everybody has Bart Simpson on shirts. Mm. I don't think that Matt Groening's walking in there being like, hey, where's your papers? <laughs> I don't think he cares. Wouldn't be surprised. Uh, uh, to bring it back though, that guy's you, showreel is... As funny as you'd imagine. <laughs> Can we watch that? Yes. Ali, are you able to put that up? I mean, <laughs> we're really going over old territory here by <laughs> talking about what coffee blend it should be. We are just stoners. This is the whole yeah. reason. I understand why you guys watch us, right? Because you just feel like you are in your basement of your friend's fucking mum's house. With <laughs> It's just that 70s show. Non-stop. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, that is, uh, that I've got is this true. business idea. It's true. Nile turned 11 is saying, I'm going to go pig hunting after this. I don't know if he's serious, but what are your opinions on pig hunting? I yeah. think he is serious. Yeah, of course he's serious. Kind of, it's massive. Can you just tell me, are you the guy from Toowoomba? Because uh, if you are. Nilton 11, are you from Toowoomba? Confirm or deny? Confirm or deny Milton. Uh, yeah, we Milton. saw we saw oh, uh, Milton Friedman here we, when we were in uh, fuck Narendra. There you go. Uh, don't murder us. Peace and love. We were driving around to. This is just a bit just in relation to this. We were driving to one of these shit creeks. Is that what he called them? A shit pit. Shit pit. Shit pit. Yeah, and a good old shit pit next to the water treatment uh, plant. And um, as is there Narendra. was there was a. There was a pig uh, that someone had like gone pigging and gotten skinned and just left the skin and, and head and torso just hanging off a gum tree, like a warning. That's fucked. Remember that? Yeah, it that? was like Lord of the Flies. It was Lord of the but Flies. But there was no reason for them to be in the same environment as Lord of the Flies. They mm. just decided that that was a good model for society. <laughs> it was brutal, man. I've never seen... And they get big. Piggies. Yeah, they get big. The bush pigs get big. Oh, yeah. They the can front get cover huge. of Bacon magazine? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but what's your... But this is a genuine question. What's your guys' opinion on... Obviously, hunting endangered species is not okay for anyone. Well, unless, let's not jump in. You're a dentist yeah, yeah. from Wyoming, in which case you love it. But that's right. <laughs> other than that, that's not... But what do you, what do you think about hunting for uh, animals that are pests? Yeah, it's great. What are you talking about? It's great. Again, I yeah. Wish, I wish I had the wherewithal to do that, but I cry when an eel's killed. So <laughs> I can't kill a pig. But if you are man enough to do that, you're doing a service. I mean, look, mm. they're shooting them with a gun. There's no manliness required. It's not like they're spear hunting. No, you know, that's like, not true. You got the mark. Has, no, like, this oh, Milton Friedman character might do this. We don't, Milton Friedman. I still don't know. You realize you got them, though, after. 
Dude, I have done it. I went uh, hunting once uh, to Outback, and I have done all of that. Chuck a spear to at the it? Outback? No, no, I didn't chuck a spear at it. They were using shotguns. Where'd you go? <laughs> um, basically to the tip of New South Wales, like a further three hours from a uh, manly. shitty town called uh, <laughs> High. It was called High. Jeez, yeah. they don't fuck H-A-Y, around. H-A-Y, High. I know you H- reckon it's just oh, like hey, one hey. meter yeah, above sea level. Yeah, but I'm pronouncing level. it like the locals do. They always said Hi. We in Hi, mate. It's not Hey. Nah, they say it hi. Oh, they say hi. Me. Well, there's five people that live there, so those five guys say hi. <laughs> they just change yeah, it. They know a little more about hi than you, Miss Lover, right? I don't know They're about locals. that. I don't know about that. Uh, Look, I wouldn't be surprised if you are a local. <laughs> the mayor of hi. <laughs> <laughs> I am Rip high. Shirt off. That's the sash. Oh, now that I look at it closer, I always thought that it was a necklace with a cross on it. No, no, no it's a <laughs> little H A Y. Mayor in progress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mayor in progress. <laughs> no, come on, come on. It's grey and it says old grey mayor. She ain't what she used to. Be. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, Band shed carrot says hunting pets is good. Pests is good. Not <laughs> pests. <laughs> no, 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 don't take uh, back your words. Then. Slaying <laughs> cane toads after a good rain is fun too. I must say it. You're kind of psychotic. I, I, it's, it's a fair mm. thing to say, but the way, the enthusiasm <laughs> that you have while yeah. saying it, it's a bit fun. You're a psycho, but you're Dexter. Uh, Honku is asking, um, tell us why you cleared the pod wall. Good question. You guys should answer that. You should question. answer that, I think. Well, I'm only going to answer that if Honk is your first name and your last names are... Ooh. Horny. If you're horny. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'm waiting. No, I'm not answering until we get to <laughs> No, that's no, fine. We can wait. We can wait. Let's just hold it out for honk, Mr. Mr. Mrs. or, you know, whatever your bloody pronoun is, honk. Mich- uh, you know what I mean? Miss Where Love is high. Confirm or deny? Well, at this point, high. yeah. At this point, that's a very existential question. And we, we can't- If you take an x-ray of his brain- It'd just be like a couple of those cheap ecstasy tabs that you can only get in Melbourne that you just like, look, I don't know if bikies are the most trustworthy chemists. <laughs> <I think, laughs> hey, if not- you're buying ice, then they're the trustable ones. Yeah, all right. Ice, they can handle. That only requires you, as we learned from Breaking Bad, to have a PhD in chemistry. But ecstasy, I don't know about that. Yeah. Nah. All I know is that in his head, you know that drama picture that's just of one face going ah, and the other face going Whoa. that's that but there's two ecstasy pills in his head one's up and one's down wow if you've got two you're options, really speaking to me right mm. you're blowing me or blowing my mind you need to buy mdma you've got two options either you buy it buy it from bikey gang or you buy it from some brazilian guy who said giving you a dope deal who do you trust more bikey me too. Australian made and uh, Australian made. It has the same <laughs> you know how when you are buying something and if the website has .au instead of just .com, that mm. weirdly gives me assurance. And I'm like, does it? it? Yeah, it does. What about if you, it says .pk? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not trusting. It's PK. Just, uh, uh, how did you know that? Okay, uh, Jack Lang is based as fuck says. Uh, of course, hunting pests is good. Who doesn't think it is? I swear, there's like environmentalists and vegans that think any kind of hunting is. Oh, bad. there are. I don't know what their strategy is, though. What do you think? Like, I don't put yourself know. in their shoes. There What's is no their solution for pests. Castrate them. Oh, That'd be theirs. Okay. The same solution John Barillaro has to pests. Uh, I've got to say right? as well that is a very based answer. Jack Lang is based as fuck. <laughs> and I've also got to put this on the record. I don't know if I have yet. Jack Lang was very based. Was it? What's the basis for this base? I don't know, but I, I really feel like we should have made the slogan instead of Lang Gang totally addicted to based. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's pretty good. But, <laughs> but, but, but like, there's no, his name's not in that. Yeah, but people Lang just kind of dot, understand dot. that that. Look at him. Look at him lighting up his pipe. Yeah, and so How it can is you a, not be based and light up a pipe? I really do like that era of Buy like... Buy this shirt, friendlygeordies.com. You know, 20s, 30s, cats, full suits, like pinstripe, like the, the under little vest thing that just, the, yeah, lighting rolled up cigarettes, pipes. It was, a, it was a cool time. It was a very cool time. Beatings were... Is that your favourite decade? I mean, look, I don't like, I don't like, you know... Polio and like, if you need to get an STD check done, they stick a metal rod, rod up your penis. Not so much into that. Yeah. More into the saying bully. 
Uh, you've given me two negatives and one positive. So okay, are you th- th- no salt water it. taffy? No salt water taffy. No. But you do like pin pinstripe suits. No, 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 I'm saying salt water taffy is a positive. You got two and two now. Salt water taffy is a positive. And also that like everything came in, <laughs> everything came in like crates, and it was all just like three companies. It was like Pin Weathers Cherry Syrup, and then it was like Jeremy Irons's. Uh, yeah. Wheat flour. And like the I tr- like how it came in was essentially a giant crate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how everything was simplified. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was like four items. You go into Coles now. Why is there five different kinds of brown rice? Can't we get one kind of brown rice and then maybe yeah, white rice, also, jasmine rice? Like it's too. It's can just, you not get rice that is you know? Uh, microwave within the bag. Fuck that. Just buy rice. It You literally can buy a machine. I agree. That does it for it's you. You too, just need to press yeah. the button. You if don't you're micro- need to buy Uncle Toby's yeah. rice. Dude, a funny story. Can I, tell, can I tell you a rice. funny story? I, no, Uncle Ben. No, before you, before you tell the story, oh, okay. because this, right. this segment right. is about the audience. No, no, go, go, go. Uh, Actually, Miss Love, you can probably help with that. Marilini is asking, I Googled based, I couldn't get a straight answer. I'm Marilini. with you. I'm with you. Well, I, st- I still Ms. don't. Love is the expert on base here. Give us a go. What do you think it is? I think it's a kind of stock that that forms the basis of a soup. Uh, in a very poetic way, I would say that you're correct. <laughs> does that answer your question, Marley? I don't think it does. I think she Googled it and she got a very uh, similar answer. Can you do I it? I really uh, don't. Look, you're putting me in a really precarious position here, Marlene, because... It's only cosmically right that Miss Love is permanently confused by the definition. I know what it that means. I think I know what it means. You I think, don't want to ruin that. No, no, but so. I think I know what it means. It means like, <laughs> it means- Tom Yum soup based. No, 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 Specifically. No, 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 it means something in the lines, it's the opposite of woke. I figured this out this while you were thing. sleeping. You know I think? I figured this out. I think that woke, I'm so annoyed that like cucks on Twitter took that word. No, it's that's a, our word. No, it's a, we need that. No, it's a negative thing now. Huh? It's seen as a ne- it's like a negative know, thing. But it used to be a positive thing. You liked when it was positive. I liked it when woke meant that you're very red pilled. Red pilled is lame. Woke sounds no. Actually, you know what I think. Oh, see, I'm woke now, now should I'm, describe I, boomers that know what's up. I get them in my shows now. I don't know so what happened, many. but people are always saying that old people don't like you because you swear. <laughs> no, it's just that your parents are squares, right? <laughs> there are parents out there that have done a lot of drugs. Basically, like hippies to, from like back your in the parents. day? <laughs> hippies back in the day. And also, you know what else? As much as I hate to admit this, and I'll talk about it on the uh, main pod, but I have some juicy goss about the ABC that I think you will be very interested in, Ali. Hey, but, Shaq. If it's about... Uh, ABC Australia, then I'm not. If it's about ABC America, I'm very interested. <laughs> well, I mean, their quality programming of Desperate Housewives. That's well, uh, they bring out a season that's, eight. That's a good <laughs> adjective you use there. Quality. Uh, you know what? I, Desperate Housewives was quality. I don't know why I'm paying it. Out. No, no, Desperate no, Housewives no, was actually not that bad. Maybe it was one of those things that you get sucked into, like how you guys got sucked into Love Island. For mm, like a long motherfucking time. Long, uh, yeah, I remember yeah. when Jordan was one time trying to convince people, dude, Love Island is not that bad. Just think of it from an evolutionary perspective. Just think that they're chimps. Yeah. And then it's not that. But I was like, are you trying to justify watching this all the time? He's like, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, of course. I'm, yes, yes. That's definitely what's He's happening. Right. But I He's still right. think I'm right. He's right. I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you on that. I miss that show. I actually miss it. But maths has filled that void. Uh, somewhat somewhat look, I think that this is the whole thing I don't know why Love Island didn't do as well but Love Island and Maths reminds me of the dynamic of Seinfeld versus Everybody Loves Raymond yeah okay say no more say no more say no more I don't need to say any more no. you know what I need to ask you though Ali is uh, I'm just kind of curious now what is your favourite decade of the 20th century such a difficult question. If you had asked me four years ago, I would have had a clear answer. The 20s. Why is everyone in the fucking 20s? Same as me. The 20s was like the great, like, you know, the most romantic Salt era. Saltwater taffy. Saltwater taffy, you know. Um, I hate the phrases. Cat's pajamas. What the fuck does that That's mean? That's great. Oh, it was just before the depression. It was the boom before the, boom. the depression. It was the great Gatsby. It was the great Gatsby. Parties. Champagne. Malt liquor. And a lot of... Uh, 
Beautiful women. Beautiful women. And who could forget, for some reason, inexplicably tiny tires on cars. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's true. Why? Also, it's thinner than bike tires. Yeah. Also, beef joiki. No wonder I like it. Beef uh, joiki exists now. Yeah, but I wasn't like that then. I tell you that much. I assume. But I changed my mind now. <laughs> I think it's the nineties. What the fuck? Yeah, in the nineties. Why do you like the nineties? Mm. You shouldn't like the nineties. It's too modern for you. Backstreet Boys. Actually, that's it. That's all we got. Oh. <laughs> we have a winner. Jesus. <laughs> That's rough, my friend. Uh, That's rough. Isn't that amazing to say that that was the greatest achievement in a century? Tell me this song Fuck. is bad. Back street, back. All right. Yeah, I That's can't what do makes it. that technique lying. amazing. Uh, all right. Uh, you've got a question, actually. What's this that? is just an admin question at this point. Little boy, daddy do wants to know, Jordan, are you doing any more Sydney shows not in Narrabeen? Good question. Look. Sydney is Narrabeen. Come on. I wasn't even aware that Narrabeen was. Narrabeen to me sounded like it was <laughs> near know. Port Macquarie. Oh, for fuck's And let's be honest, sake. it probably is. No, I'm it's not. not. That it's I've Sydney. driven there many times for Mexicano, specifically. There's a place I called... I thought you'd go there for... It sounds like a place that would have an all right bar and grill. It do, Well, it has a good... It, dude, ha, ha, look. Put jo, Jot this down in a little notebook. Mm -hmm, Mexicano... Learning. It's the only place in Australia that hand makes their own tortillas. <laughs> that's a that's a bad thing. <laughs> How's that? Defend yourself. There's too oh. many people making handmade tortillas. That's the only ones in the country. Well, I'm sure there's a few more Mexicans <laughs> out there doing it. We, are you reading from my script? Is like there any Mexicans in Australia? Yeah, there are now. Live? There are now. Uh, they all left, didn't they? After like the pandemic? No, no, no there are some. I know one. Mariana. She's a good cook too. Does she say J instead of Y? Give me an example. Can I hear that in a sentence? Where you going? I didn't hear. I just said it's ch there. Uh, Jesus, you got it. Fuck. You got, didn't yeah. use the letter you're trying to. This is her. Ali makes his own non bread. That was Have true. You both got my script. Let's try that again, champion. Where'd you go? Nah. Hey, man, do you just want to know about Capoeira? <laughs> nah, that's that's Brazilians. That's, that's not what Mexicans. I'm saying. I'm nah, swear nah. you're just mistaken. No, no, no. I, I know this for this for a fact. Oh, I bet I'm going to meet Mariana, and it is just a cutout of Eddie Gordo. It's Marilini. You <laughs> met her. You, you know who she is. Uh, uh, no, we're talking Coney, about different people. Coney for PM says Ali makes his own bombs. Just saying. <laughs> On that note, I, I read this out on purpose. Dude, you know how, like, last uh, podcast I told that story about spiders being holy in Islam? I got a lot of shit for it. Why? <laughs> By other Muslims. What'd they say? Yes. Well, one guy just says, <laughs> uh, just to be clear, it is, it's not something that is in Islam. It might be a Pakistani culture thing. Like, maybe you're just reading Pakistani books. Well, we got a lot of Muslim fans. And and then, why which is, is there this sheikh that listens to this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, if you look at uh, countries like Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, he named like 15 countries. It is not a thing. And then just below it, some guy's like, actually, it is a thing. And then the, so there's like a whole fucking thing about there's like it's a thing and they're like it's a tradition. Someone's like it's in the books. <laughs> so just Jesus, want to, just want to clear it up. Uh, who, who who was that? Just a bunch of Muslims, dude. Like they, there are a few that listen what to the, it and they Muslims got triggered by. It. There's no chance. No, of course there is because not all Muslims. Mish, believe it or not, not all Muslims are radical fundamentally. Some I'm of them just like friendly Geordies. I believe it. And I was saying that he's just walking into the Lint Cafe again, just being like, I'm sorry, I've just got to clear some <laughs> <laughs> No. But, no. but for, for the guy who's it's saying like, it's only a Pakistani thing, that's not true. I mean, it's a tradition. Some people don't believe it. And then there's this other guy who's like, oh, look, the story is accurate. But that the conclusion is wrong. Spiders aren't holy. It just means that God loves you, dude. It's it's like, you got whatever way you want to do it. I'm just saying it was Spider Man. <laughs> That's what it was. Anyway, so there you go. All the Muslims out there. It'd be so good if you go back, you look at the actual original text. <laughs> yeah. And that's Stan Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad is yeah. Stanley. <laughs> Stan Stanley's God. <laughs> Stanley is Allah. And uh, who's that other guy? Mo. 
No, dude, come on. Mo is Peter. It'd be way funnier if there was just an appendix or whatever. Not appendix. Holy what shit, are they called? Twitch chat is going insane because oh, because of all this Muslim stuff, it's constantly highlighting comments like, do you want to allow this or deny this? Do you want to allow this or deny this? Oh, shit. What does that mean? But that's like, oh, yeah. that's hot button uh, topic. Yeah, because like I said, uh, I guess a bunch of Muslims. Wait, no, say I white. One, what happens I if you say one white? one of those bunch of Muslims. Uh, anyway, so I guess we'll move on from this. <laughs> Twitch might disconnect wait, us. So wait, what races does it do that for? What if you say white? Is it also just like, or is it just like, that is fine? Who knows? Anyway, how much better would it be if like in the end of the, the, the Quran, it's just sort of like, greetings, fellow Muslim fighters. And just had an extra chapter. Just sort of like, Stanley. Yeah, Muslim actually. man. Actually, you know, that's what that was the core concept of satanic <laughs> verses. What? What? Well, that Stan Lee the, wrote the Bible. The, the thing is, again, if you think that was going to get me in trouble, this will definitely get me into trouble. But there's this oh, conspiracy Jesus. theory within Islam. It has no basis or anything. But there was a period when the revelations were made and before it was compiled into a book. And the conspiracy theories among some people go that that was the time when a few extra verses were injected, not by God, but by Satan himself. And those are called the satanic verses. This is completely debunked. This is not an actual story, so please don't get me. But this was like a, a myth that that's why Salman Rushdie named his book the satanic verses. He was like he was I still highlighting. Get why he those. Named it that. Oh, because of the myth of the satanic verses. Look, I'm going to be honest. I uh, haven't read the book. <laughs> Neither. Yeah. No yeah. one has. It's an impossible book to read. Is it why? why? Because uh, it's it like, not written. It, it's not written like a book. It's written so there are verses. And if you read, if you read the Quran, which is why if someone says I've read the Quran, they're lying. Because <laughs> you really need to be an academic to really read the Quran. Because really? all the verses are disjointed. It makes no sense. It doesn't flow like a story. <coughs> it's more like a ledger of sayings and stuff. And they purposely kept it that way because they're saying it's not written by a human being. It's written by God, so it doesn't flow like a natural book. So it's a really, really complicated book to read. What about um, yeah. rap? Go. You know that. You know that. You know <laughs> that. Much. And all of it is in poetry, so it's really layered. The entire Quran is in prose. Really? Have you read the book Heaven and Hell? That's a famous book, right? Or is it called I The Marriage of Heaven and Hell? Isn't that a famous book? Did you just watch the movie Signs? <laughs> I've seen that, but no, <laughs> no. Anyway, forget that. I guess I thought you were going to be like, of course, Heaven and Hell is as big as the Quran, but like, well. All I'm saying is it'd be amazing if that was written by Nicolas Cage. What? Heaven and, Heaven and hell. Nicolas Cage didn't write signs. Yeah, but... You're I'm just throwing it in there? It's like, I just Can you imagine think there was a plot to that. It was just I know, filming yeah. Nicolas Cage's life. Mel Gibson. Huh? Mel Gibson. Nicolas Cage signs. wasn't in signs? No. What was Mel Gibson in? What was, where was he a signs. professor just being like, I don't believe in God. No, oh, no, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, now, now I believe in God. Dude, you've reached peak boomer. You're just like, it was Mel Gibson, right? Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson's a great actor. Yeah, that, no. what, that's, you've reached that what level. What happened to Bogart Humphrey? <laughs> that's, you, He's dead. You I work, just saw him on the TV. You work so so many hours now that like what <laughs> you have the want? brain of a 65-year-old man. I do. <laughs> so good. Wait, were you guys talking about what women want? Walt Whitman, Whitman want. want. The yeah, the movie. Bill <laughs> I thought Gibson. you said Walt Whitman want. What Walt Whitman wants. That's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a little too. bit of respect. That's what he wants. Uh. <laughs> All right, look, this was a great free show. <laughs> yeah, it was that. mad. Uh, unless we've got, we'll, we'll answer one more question and we'll go on a break and come back. Left with behind is confusing signs with left behind. Fat Dyke on crack is saying blasphemous shit. So I'm not going to read that shit out. Loud. Nah, come on. Fat Dyke on crack. He's saying he wrote the Quran. Bullshit. <gasps> fat Dyke Our 100,000 cool. Muslim fans will revolt. <laughs> right. Maybe I should do a segment, stories of the Quran and get into real trouble. And then, and then, and then, then brackets, like, write this in brackets. Takia. No, I'm not writing that in <laughs> brackets, please. Uh, anyways, uh, look, we'll go on a quick, because I'm not getting any uh, Israel versus Palestine, who's better? Oh, for fuck's sake. No, yeah, that's a two-word answer. Uh, uh, Israel. And Palestine, no, not Israel. There you go. Well, for him, Israel. No, 
Yeah, I guess. Hey, have you been following the news on Israel, Miss? Your no. Benjamin is about to get his ass kicked. My, he's, well, what like think a, I, he's, he, he's in a Julia Gillard situation. How funny is this? What do you think? I voted for him. Cosmic did you? justice. He's in a Julia Gillard type situation, and the and the main power broker that can put him into government or not put him into government is the Islamic Party. <laughs> <laughs> so in, what? Right, we'll, we'll go on a break, and uh, we will come back uh, with the main part. Uh, the mics weren't on. <laughs> Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Get fish. And uh, I'll go back Get to you, Jordan. You fish. were saying? Fish, fish, fish. I'm feeling in a good mood. And you know why? I was talking to someone who used to work at the ABC and they were shitting on it a lot. Mm. Would you like to know more? This is a choose your own adventure. Um, yes, no, all of uh, the above. Well, let's, go, let's go with yeah. Let's go with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very enthusiastic first option from Miss Love. <laughs> Ali, dare you agree? Dare you enter the challenge? <laughs> Sorry, I missed a question. I was more concerned <laughs> oh, about the for sound. Fuck's sake. Hey, I'm a Take techie a yes. as well as true, 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 true. So, true. Say, can, can you repeat the question again? Do you want to hear me shit on the ABC? Oh yes, I do. Let's start with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> always, always, always. That a boy, Ali. All right, let's stick it to him. Now, all the little supporters of Artie that listen to this Twitch stream, as you can imagine, this is the most pro ABC audience there is in the country the friendly geordies podcast may as well call ourselves the friendlies of abc mm. just take no take abcj abcj yep triple abcj mm. that's us and actually yeah ali balabragic Constable Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> abcj not bad not bad <laughs> um right so I talking to this legend that used to work at the ABC, and I won't get them in trouble by telling them their names, but... Tom Tilly. No way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the fucking saving grace. The only one telling it like it is <laughs> at the ABC. <laughs> and if he's even the there anymore. The only road ginger. I don't uh, he's even there anymore. I, I was thinking of... Uh, I don't know where he is anymore, except for I'm assuming in a coffee shop in Bondi. Uh, they just can't shoo him out, so he just sits there and he's like... Mm. So dark all of a sudden and cold. Mm. What's Maybe the I should do a hack about it. <laughs> oh wait, I can't. Hmm? Wait, what's the ghost? I didn't even let him, let, him, let him continue. Let Tom him continue. He's locked in a coffee shop. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> sorry, dude. Go on, Jordan. Oh, fuck. He was there in the boomer generation of the ABC. It makes so much sense to the people that I know from the ABC what he was saying. The way that they saw working there was like it was the foreign service, I suppose, just a prestigious bureaucrat. That's how they saw their job. They didn't actually really give a shit about who was and wasn't in government. They were perfectly happy to take directives and orders. They actually liked sitting on their asses doing nothing. He was talking about just all of this waste that used to happen in the ABC. He's saying the only good thing about a Liberal government coming in is that they slashed the budget because there was just all these cunts getting fat <laughs> of a bunch of working-class schmoes as they were going, I think I'm going to do a documentary in Venice, yes. This guy used to be at the front line of Afghanistan, Iraq. He'd be in all these war zones. In fact, <coughs> he was uh, there when that female Pakistani president who's the daughter of that boss. Yeah, Benazir Bhutto. Mooney. Mooney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> what are you talking about anymore? Nah, Modi. Are you talking about Captain Modi. 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 <laughs> But go on, I finished the Which story. Which was of world events. Which finish, finish the story. Mooney can come in after. <laughs> he was there when she was assassinated. Mm -hmm. He was. He used to be on the front line of all these war scenes. And why? Because he was part of Gen X. And so all the baby boomers would say, mm, you can take Iraq and I'll take mm, France. <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> and they used to fucking Fair sit cool. around on way more money than he was. Apparently they were saying that there just used to be a pension system when they were there. So they'd spend a lifetime of doing fuck nothing. Really, the Liberals pay them to not report on anything. The Nationals just want them there so there's some kind of new service to the bush. And so they can't get rid of them because the Nationals won't let them. So the Liberals pretty much just stock it and they've 
perfected it down to an art, and he was saying that the absolute crack was, yep, you've got the formula right, well done, Libs, was them employing Annabelle Crabb. There's a few people there that just, you know, just sit around and be like, oh, is that, what are you having for lunch there? Are you having crab linguine? Hmm. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, lovely Joe Hockey. That, that is, <laughs> that's what well, they wanted. Well, my name is Annabelle Crabb, sure. They started moments kicking out anyone with balls like him and he was saying that, look, to be honest, there was a small contingency to begin with. Even when people, your parents are always saying, it was so good, the ABC back in the day. It was good because it was a couple of people like him and he used to do things that used to shit off the rest of the contingency ABC of going somewhere, a war zone, for instance, that uh, his higher-ups, the one level up, would say, no, you're not going there because they didn't want to deal with the headache of the higher-ups saying, no, we're not going to do it. And he'd just go, fuck it, I'm just going to go on my three-month vacations that everyone at the ABC has. I'm just going to go there. I'm going to film it on a digicam and come back. And he proved before we proved that you can go to somewhere and just use a camera phone. Mm. You don't need fucking 30 people to film a documentary. You just go there and you say, you, what happened? What do you think? That's it. He went and did that. He pretty much made 30 people's jobs redundant by doing it. Because the higher ups, the higher higher ups would look at it and go, well, you shouldn't have done that. But it does cost fuck all, so we'll buy it. You know? <laughs> hey, and it's the original uh, friendly Jimmy's method, method. He was the original friendly Jimmy's. I love this guy. Uh, but he was pretty much just saying that it was just this giant fucking free for all of taxpayer money. And they'd be stupid little petty things in saying that it's just fucking decadent and gross what would happen in that there would be. Somebody working on a show, they just get shifted around because they had this ethos of being like, got to mix it up. And then someone would just be like, ooh, Margaret's working on this and she doesn't like Chazelle. So Chazelle is just going to sit on her fucking ass for six months, get paid 300 grand to think of a documentary idea. Didn't matter if she did or didn't. They just park her somewhere, say, that's all right, Cherise, you sit around. You just think about where you'd like to go. Oh, China? I've always wanted to go to China. And then just go off there. You fucking do nothing. You get aired at 10 p.m. on a Tuesday. Come back. Just get a job on radio. It was just this little elite cabal that just got their way in. Isn't sucked that- off the taxpayer. They were really jealous that they couldn't get on fucking BBC, which is why all the ones that are boomer ages still had that voice that sounded like this. But isn't that every organisation minus the tax money? But this is a whole no, thing. it's not every it's organization. You know what this continues because this reminds me of you know how like I was doing uh, I was um, researching on that Paul Keating script mm. and uh, I came across uh, well I didn't come across I started looking into Commonwealth Bank's privatization. I had a completely different idea of what actually happened. It's it's basically just that yeah the ABC turned that into the Commonwealth Bank mm. because you know you assume oh. Um, Commonwealth Bank was privatized in early '90s. You automatically think, okay, so this must have been a, this must have been a move that was hated by the left, and the right would have loved it. The unions would have opposed it. The bank would have preferred it. Completely opposite. opposite. The unions desperately, the ACTU said that we would love for Commonwealth Bank to be privatized. Commonwealth Bank said, we do not want to be privatized mm. because it was basically that. Like, just getting fat off the tax. At bank. some point, the Commonwealth became, they, they started projecting like, we need, to be a, we need to act like a commercial bank. We need to be independent. So they would, they would get the allowance of that. So that means that they would start like investing in things like, um, you know, like the mining industry or whatever, whatever makes them money. But then, and they would also take millions and millions of dollars of taxpayer money and, beca- and would refuse things like um, private equity into housing affordability. They'd be like, oh, I don't know if that would work for the bank. And they would just be sitting there with these huge paychecks, essentially w- running a commercial enterprise that was super inefficient at taxpayer dollars. And they never wanted to get privatized for that reason. Yeah. And they got actually a lot better after getting privatized because once that tax subsidy, the biggest turning point was, how crazy is this? The bank of... Um, uh, Bank of Victoria, which was a public bank, went bankrupt. And so the government, the Keating government was saying, okay, Commonwealth Bank, you're a public bank, you need to buy them out. Because if they go under, a lot of people who have their money in the Bank of Victoria would go under. And the Commonwealth Bank was like, oh, I don't know if you want to do this. And that's when basically Keating realized, what's the point of you being public? Like, why? 
would we support <laughs> you if you're not willing to help in this crisis? Yeah. And in fact, that was that was the critical point when they eventually did privatize it. So Keating said, okay, I'm going to inject a fuckload of liquidity into it. You're going to have to buy out Bank of Victoria because we don't want people to start fucking going uh, starving and we're also going to privatize you. Mm. And so that was a deal that was acceptable for everyone. Yep. But it's basically what the ABC was. like. Well, also the other thing that Commonwealth Bank did, I don't know about Victoria Bank, but the Commonwealth Bank used to campaign against the Labor Party actively. Yeah, they didn't... Yeah, because it would just be flushed with libs because they're in most of the time. Because and it, so they'd sit around and buy up newspapers and then put their propaganda into it. It's insane. Like, it really challenges some of the preconceived notions. Like, And it, it, brings, out, it brings that point out. Dolomite Having, accounts. like, a really ideological opinion towards privatisation is also wrong. Like, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Exactly. Some things need to get privatised. And some things don't need to get privatized. Yep. In this case, Commonwealth Bank really needed to get privatized. But, you know, our national electricity grid probably should not get privatized. Exactly. <laughs> Controversial an opinion. An example of the propaganda, Dolomites accounts. Don't need that shit. Just a fraudulent, you know. But how much did you think you needed it when you were five? I still you think I need it. <laughs> I have nothing. Just, just the Dolomites checkbook... To me, the emotional response I have to that thing is the equivalent of like a wad of bills, like a, a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you do feel like that you've got some insider trader knowledge by yeah. like that small guy that I assume was one of those Hamburglar characters that don't have names that are always in the background of McDonald's. That guy was just kind of sitting there just being like, you know, two dollars a week turns out to be a hundred dollars a year. Yeah, or, 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 <laughs> or in your case, I think you should get into silver. <laughs> <laughs> what was the little animation? Wasn't it a guy on the moon? I think it was a guy out of space. Weren't they kind of those dancing Sesame Street characters? I'm pretty sure it was on the moon. Anyway, I, f I can't remember. Um, Dolomites. A simple Google could hopefully... Uh, Maybe it was just a real extreme close-up of dust mites. That's <laughs> what they actually look like. <laughs> do you want to add just... something more to that story or should we yes, move on to our first segment? Yes, I do. Okay, do it. These pricks, apparently they used to be on a pension system. They'd be on fucking $400,000 a year, 500000 And this was the on-air talent. There'd be a bunch of producers that you wouldn't know the names of that were on two hundred grand a year, and there'd be like six of them when you need one producer for a show minimum. I mean, if Sky News has just turned it into an art. Apparently they have one producer between three shows. So they have six shows on their After Dark. They've got two producers but the ABC would have one show and six producers. Think about what a rort this system is. It's just anybody that's on the in track gets a job for life guaranteed. They'd have a pension. Dig this. A pension that was 80% of their salary. Say they're on four hundred grand a year. What the fuck's that? They'd be on $320,000 for the rest of their lives if they retired. Jesus. Hey, just so you know, those are the kind of benefits other organisations give. What do you mean? Like who? Like the ABC. We need to rework this friendly Geordie's enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Everyone does it. No, but that was it. No, not everyone does it. No one Then the Libs came in. I'm really starting to see it from the Libs' perspective now. This is the one thing that I agree with them on. They came in and they were just like, what the fuck's this shit? We'll give you a pension. They were just like, oh my God, they're putting us on superannuation that is as good, if not better, than the politician's superannuation. What is this 70% of my wage? That's what it turned out to be. It was like, it was, a, a, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was something along the lines of they're getting a superannuation that is seven times better than the average worker. And they do fuck nothing but sit on their ass. At the very least, they report nothing. At most, they report straight out propaganda for the Liberal Party. And this is the thing that he was just saying that just completely blew my mind because I always just used to think they'd be like, oh, what can you do? They don't give a fuck. They don't care at all. They just want to go on their little fucking trips to Europe and the taxpayer to pay for it in absolute lavish luxury and report back. He was just talking about, like, uh, the fact that there was really only a, a tiny amount of journalists that had any actual grunt to them that actually wanted to report things or would even challenge it, right? Most of the times... It wasn't even that they didn't know where the boundaries were. They just didn't want to report things of importance. They were just like, mm, that's too complicated. Can we, can we do a documentary about Shakespeare? Yeah, I really like Shakespeare. Well, it has its place. Does it? I like Shakespeare. Is this a controversial <laughs> opinion? Shakespeare is overrated. 
That's what I think too. Change Shame my mind. Again, because it's people in the fucking Sydney Theatre Company, ABC, Sydney Morning Herald bubble that. that love it. Hang totally on, let me disagree. just see. Well, so the ABC was basically just like any other uh, bureaucratic organisation where people were just fat cats waiting for their paychecks and their massive pensions once they retire. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. The whole myth about journalism being like, I don't know, equivalent to first responders is really a miscalculation on our part. <laughs> we shouldn't have given them that level of importance. Yeah, it really is insane. Pretty much all, the, the, the real summary that I got from it was, first of all, he agrees with me, just fucking privatise it. It's if absolute Labor shit show. If Labour got in, it's just too far gone. The rot's so far in there. And he was saying that it didn't really change when the Labour Party was in. And it has that entrenched attitude that I always thought was just part of the propaganda model that was kind of coming from the top and kind of impressed upon the lower journalists. But he was just saying it's just right through. They actually sit there being like, hmm, Polly's, am I right? What can you do? Also, I want to have cheese with them. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do a show about us having dinner. <laughs> you know, they, they have that fucking attitude all the way through it. And he was hey, just saying, like, at the least, at uh. the very least, you could do exactly the same job for fucking $100 million a year. It is so overpriced. It just goes all into overinflated wages mm. for, like, really unlikable people because I remember them. And he just started cracking up when I made this comparison because he was it's such a good thought, right? The big takeaway from it was it's like they thought they were part of the foreign service, just a thing that you give as a plush job to bureaucrats that are owed favours uh, you know, just as a diplomat that sits there and is just like, yeah, uh, Scomo, Scomo would like to say to you, Mr. Trump, that he likes you. Okay, that'll be $500,000 a year. Like, that's mostly what fucking diplomats, not diplomats, um, ambassadors do, really. Right, yeah. Like, he was saying the that that UN. was pretty much that. They just saw it as just, it, it was all just this at the end of the day. They didn't believe in journalism. They weren't there for that reason. They were there to say, I work at the ABC. And... I remember because we grew up with a lot of these people, you'd see a lot of them around and they did feel like the foreign service to me. I was like, they'd be having these conversations where you'd be like, why aren't your feet resting on a beer rug? Why don't you have a safari hat on? Why aren't you lighting up a pipe saying, this reminds me of uh, what happened when I was in Botswana? Because it was, that was their whole fucking stories. It was yeah. just, uh, I was told that I met Boutros, Boutros Gali, and he said a rather amusing anecdote to me. But it's like, well, first of all, I'm 12. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> but like, you know, th that was them. And their massive Sorry. success was convincing the rest of the population that if they get a 2% cut in their salary that is somehow going to be the end of the country that was they again paul keating's great quote which was that as soon as the, uh, you, you say anything about the abc you hear it on the am the pm moaning to the country about their problems they've just brainwashed the country into thinking that they're these poor little defensive beings but the thing is look at this fucking podcast this podcast gets more views than 80 percent of the trash that the abc produces it's way more substantive for fuck's sake it's got mislove on it and it's more substantive yeah isn't and that fucking insane sh sh these are journalists that have phds in journalism <laughs> and we, yeah, we, don't, we don't travel in luxury <laughs> we get to travel but we travel in shitty ibis budget hotels that always lead to one of us fighting with george if we're gonna stay here again i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> <laughs> i like it because it reminds me of blade runner 2049 yeah yeah it is it's pretty insane well but that is a good point nah, fair. that is a good point i mean you can back this up. We grew up with the same circle and we saw these people. Well, look, I'm not going to speak for the, on, on that, but I I, uh, I am kind of curious though. Like, I don't know if I believe that you wouldn't completely change your tune if Labor wasn't in. And I'm not saying that's not wrong. I'm just interested in- This is a problem that persists even if Labor was in. Yeah, exactly. It's not a Labor or Liberal issue. It's just that- Overpaid. Uh, the idea that someone thinks it's that their job- bureaucracy. Is always going to be secure no matter what they do. It's the thing that you were talking about in Croatia when your dad was like, um, your dad was pissed off at some guy who was sleeping on the job. That little thing is called communism. Look it up. Everyone on Twitch, it's, Google it's, that. It's, it's a bit That's like what I'm that. saying, dude. Sky News was right. The ABC is a communist <laughs> propaganda <laughs> network. They're right. But they're not... No, they're not that. They're just living out the... Uh, 
you know, they're living that life out. I don't think they're like going out there being like communism is the best. They're being like the free market, you know, with, with, with like the free market with uh, good social services is the best. But I want to get paid really well and never lose my job. You know what I mean? They might be living that. You, you, you know, life. you should get paid really this is what well. Saying. They're not. They don't even believe that shit. You they believe. They believe in getting really expensive cheese and wine and sitting around with fucking Lee sales in Double Bay restaurants. That's what they yeah. believe in. And that's fine. Like you, 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 <laughs> you should not be incentivized based on how experienced you are or how good at. They're not. Yeah. But they're not. But they're not rewarded on that. You know what they're rewarded on? What? They know. That's it. But that's the same as the music, very similar to the music industry, very similar to like the arts, politics. I don't know, I don't know like if it is, is similar really to the music industry. I want to actually gauge people's same opinions on this now that we're at it. I really do think Does this. the ABC switch to a labor bias if Albo wins the election? If Albo's in for 12 years. Oh, yeah. come on. Well, look, yeah, Ida Butt Rose is on a five-year contract. That'll get renewed before the next election. So she'll be up to another five years. Right. The entire board will be there for another five years. Right. Then you have to start systematically weeding them out, which will be its own bureaucratic okay. fight because they're just going to entrench themselves in. The different, the, the, There is a cultural rot there in that they truly do not give a fuck if there's a Labor or Liberal government in there. They don't give a fuck about the country. Damn. Damn. They don't care. Well, uh, in, in terms of your question of what the audience says, Root Paul says ABC is middle class welfare. See, that's what I thought, dude, but $400,000 a year ain't middle class. Mm, that's a. Agreed, agreed. $400,000 a year is like 90 grand, isn't it? What do you mean? Sorry, sorry. Ninety grand is middle class, or like, you know, you just like middle, 80 yeah, grand, yeah, yeah. 80 to 100K, middle that'd class be is middle like class. 60 to. 80 isn't it that's what i thought they yeah, were yeah. around i think it's around 80 85 now with inflation and am i right which came out yeah but um so i think anything below 100 you'd still be considered middle class to be fair you probably okay. be considered middle class even after 100 110 120 yeah, um 400 is not middle class. 400 is not middle class by any means dude it really does because i remember ages ago i put out this message saying that I swear that you could just get a hundred grand out to ten YouTubers, and it'd have more of a reach and more of an impact. Well, that's than what one of the, the ABC. You could gut oh, the entire ABC, save yourself. That's a what one of dollars. the suggestions was over here. Someone I can't remember your name. Sorry, you should have. They were saying you should actually gut the ABC and provide the funds to independent uh, journalists. So just scattered the money all over the place. Exactly. Could you imagine if there was a but billion you know dollars of that? But but no government is gonna is gonna have the balls to do it because that's gonna be an anarchic system. They're super concerned about like what words, what buzzwords you say on their normal programming. Imagine giving it to like a bunch of people that are constantly producing twenty four seven news cycle content. Oh, no, it never happened. They in they, a they would years. never it's agree not happen, to do it. But all I'm saying is because. I was just talking to this guy and then it just became very apparent to me that like, fuck, Sky News is so admirable. <laughs> like, I did not know how much on an oily rag that operation runs. On a purely operational level, Sky News is a thing of beauty. Well, Sky News produces have gone full between free six market. shows. Huh? You guys have gone full free market. It's just such a good testament of the free market. And I was just thinking about it. I didn't get any fucking help from the government. Oh, okay. I was on Centrelink looking for a job for six months until I could make myself sustainable enough to work on the fucking mm. platform, right? Mm. But other than that, I got no taxpayer handouts. None. It was purely the free probably market. Probably for the best, man. Like, like, you know what? Choice. Honestly, it was probably for the best. Like, it made you rethink uh, your strategy and make your content better because you had no yeah, other did, way of exactly. doing it. Exactly. And Which, also the other thing is when you're dealing with the free market, you're actually responsive to what the audience wants. You have to cuz your survival depends on it. Yeah. That's how you get better. Yes. Uh so you guys need is the script. mother of all inventions. Seriously. Look, I I I don't <laughs> think I don't think that um I don't necessarily think that you should constantly be insecure about your job. You should have cushion. But then if your entire job is about cushion and people are applying for that job because of that cushion, that's just promoting a culture that's not conducive to productivity. Mm. Uh, it's as simple as that. But that actually brings us to our uh, what was supposed to be our first segment. This is should actually be a self-help question, but one of the things, um, the conversation, a uh, newspaper came up with an article um, that says, 
many, many more Aussies are graduating with tertiary education, but only one in four are actually getting jobs. The question is, Jordan, for you, well, that's just a stat. What, sh- what do you think young people that have graduated that are three out of four that have a university degree but are not getting jobs or are getting jobs in which they're underemployed, how do they get out of that? What do they really need to be doing to get a job or whatever they want in life? You ready for this? Ali, can you clip this and put it up on my self-help channel? Because I was going to make this an episode anyway. Mm-hmm. You want to hear some top-tier advice? The market rewards problem solvers. Your job is to identify what problem you can solve, what naturally are you talented in, but then direct that into how can I solve as many people's problems as possible using that. So we'll give an example. Say you like dogs a lot. You know you're very good with dogs. Woof, woof. There you go. That's one. There, that's what they sound like. Who needs an effects button, eh? Uh, If you really like dogs, you think that you've got a natural talent for it. I I was always saying on the self-help channel, you read a lot of books in the field of dog training. But then you start thinking about, okay, how could I apply that? You start advertising yourself as, I can make your dog behave. That's a problem that people have. There's a lot of piece of shit dogs out there and a lot of owners with way too much money. And no kids anymore because there's a thing called dog moms, you know? And they'll just be sitting there being like, oh, she's, Pookie's not behaving. I'm, I'm not externalising the fact that I t- kept it too late to have kids. It's, it's Pookie's problem, <laughs> right? And so your job is to kind of narrow in and think about how can I fix something? If you are one of those people, you are not going to be one of those three quarters of people that have unstable work. I can promise you that. If you are able to solve enough people's problems in life, you are going to be wealthy, successful, and happy. And with or without tertiary education too. With or without tertiary education, because this is the other secret. I wish that I did this. The only reason that I'm glad that I went to university is pretty much because I met you and someone else whose name will not be mentioned, but let's just pretend. Let's just call him from now non-Pakistani Ali. Hey, uh, hey, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I know who it is. But, uh, uh, but the thing is, like, it was pretty much just because I met a couple of friends, but that was not worth a hundred grand. Yeah? But uh, I, yeah. I understand that, and I'm a big uh, advocate of that too, but I do think that there are certain merits of for going to university. I think that you can get those merits for a hundred bucks a year from the library. You can, but most people won't. Also, the, yes, that's true. But if you have enough drive in life, if you have that yearning of I'm going to make something of myself, I don't think you need university. I think you need an education that you can't get at university, which is all the lecturers that they try and shun away from university because they aren't part of the dogma. And also because they're about very specialized things that only you know. The current show that I've got, Friendly Geordies Cancels the Media, you know what that's a result of? All these academics that I wasn't taught about when I was in university. I did courses on media and politics. What I was learning in there was dog shit. But the, the, the problem that you get with self-education is for, self-education has, is more effective than actual university education because if you think about it, if you're doing it yourself, you're more interested in Most of the time, you're just like kind of sleeping in class. But what I have, what I do think is that there is certain merits to the fact that if you self-educate yourself, you have gaps in knowledge, which can really butt you in the ass at the wrong time. Because when you're, when someone structures a, let's say a course for you, they make sure that every area is covered and then you might be interested in certain aspect of it and you might do more research into it. But if you're like just solely trying to educate yourself almost haphazardly, there are areas that you miss out on and it's not your fault and that can that can cause problems later. So I'm not saying that university education is a must, but there are certain merits to university education. If you're a very driven person, if you're someone that has an attitude of you're ambitious and you want to go out there and do things, it really doesn't matter. You do university, you don't do university. The one of the stats that is not mentioned over here is, which I did read, is sure, if you're, if you're tertiary educated, you 
that doesn't guarantee you a job. But you know what makes it even more difficult? If you're not university educated. So it's even worse for people that aren't. So yes, getting a university degree doesn't guarantee you shit. But not getting one puts you in a almost worse situation than someone who has. I think that that's kind of just a coincidental stat. I think that it's because people that go to university are usually a little more focused and driven than people that don't go to university. You know, there's not always a case. There's such a thing as Jim's mowing. But Jim's mowing in itself is its own mobile university. <laughs> university of Lawn. Damn straight. Sistin. But uh, it, it also <laughs> means you can read. And that's a huge thing. Exactly. So if you can go to university, if you're intelligent enough to do it, I really think that it's a waste of time. In fact, for instance, I'll give you a really good example. There's a couple of people on my staff now that are just doing this part-time because they're doing university. And I'm just thinking, for fuck's sake, just quit. You would learn so much more editing for me and you'd be earning money and you would have time to just sit around and read. Why are you sitting there in a media degree while they sit there and be like, okay, we're going to teach you how to edit on videotape? Why? <laughs> and why are you paying six grand for that course? That's a thing. So you might be right in that they'll just be like opening your mind to all of these things. But let's be honest, a lot of them are fucking useless. I think that Steve Jobs had it right when he was just saying, you educate yourself, you get as a result of that all of these unique ideas that are only in your head because you're only reading that combination of books yourself. And therefore, as a result of that, you can solve a really specific problem. I think that that's what happened with me. I got interested in comedy. I got interested in Noam Chomsky, and admittedly that was because of university, but again, it was just by dumb luck that I went to South Korea. If I didn't, that wouldn't have happened. And so as a result of that, I had a problem that I could solve, which is that everybody in Australia is extremely fucking brainwashed, and I can solve that because I am able to put up enough glitch and glamour to try and get people in and just being like, hey, I'm going to teach you about Chomsky, but I'm going to do a little tap dance with one of those candy cane canes. <laughs> the winning formula. <laughs> the winning formula. But what do you reckon, miss? You've been awfully silent sitting in there. You weigh in on this one. What do you think tertiary education taught you? Yeah, you, I mean, I, I'm being silent because you guys have obviously gotten into the bags, mate. Jesus. That was, that was, that was do strong. You, do you think that you're, because you are a university graduate. Yes. Do you think it was of any use? For me or? For, for you, for you per uh, personally. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I'd probably just agree with you guys. Like, <sighs> Well, we both have different opinions. There's and, I'll, and, and I'll tell you one of the things. I met this one guy who actually lives very close to here. I was telling him the same thing. He was an older guy. He was older than me. He, I was in my early 20s. He was in his mid-30s at the time. We were doing the same job. And I was basically telling him what a useless thing a university degree really is. And he was like, I was telling him how I graduated. And like it has zero. I just have a debt, really. It's, it's nothing more than that. And he said, you're saying that because you have one. And I was like, okay, tell me, how has, how has it disadvantaged you? And he was like, well, for one, I don't qualify for at least 50% of the jobs that are posted online. You need a university degree for it. Okay. Now that I'm a little older and wiser and you've put it in that context, let me completely backflip my argument. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I think that he's right in that if you're entering the job market, yes, you're right. A degree is kind of just the prerequisite. But also the other thing that you have now is degree over inflation What's happened to degrees is what happens to money in Zimbabwe. It's just everyone's got a fucking degree because universities are just money machines. And so they're just handing out certificates left, right and centre. And so a university degree does not mean what it meant in the 70s, for instance. No, it, I, and I, I, I agree with that. Look, it, it, like that's a good comparison. It's like Zimbabwe, right? So the, you flood the market with these universities. A lot of times they're bullshit degrees and it really reduces the value that that degree holds. So let's say you've got $10,000 in Zimbabwe. All of a sudden the market's been flooded. Your $10,000 are now $5,000 or $2,000. That's shit. But if you had $0 from the beginning, you still have $0 now. Mm. At least with an overinflated two two thousand dollars, you've got something to work with, you know. I think you're right, but this is the other thing that I wasn't even thinking about because I've just been so inundated and brainwashed now through my own life experience, I suppose. But it's just look, as I'm always pointing out in my uh, self help channel, dude, aim to be self employed or start a business unless you are somebody that wants to be a professional, right? 
if you want to be a professional, but then start your own practice eventually, but you need all of that life experience. Yes, but the thing is, this is the whole thing. That guy, pretty much, let's be honest, what is somebody who is applying for jobs? They're a beggar. <laughs> they're really a fucking beggar. I mean, like look, they're just it's, walking it's in and being like, have you got some it. bread? And they're just like, be gone with you. Yeah, you can have one night here, but you've got to clean out the manure. That's really what's happening there. It's just, <laughs> a, a, as like feudal society has advanced, what we're really looking at is just a post-industrial feudal society, right? A, yeah, rent feud, rent, rental feudal society. And it's not your fault. I think that everybody has been conditioned to think because they ca- grew up in the 20th century and everybody that's still in power has a 20th century mindset that you go to university, you get a degree, you get a job. That economy doesn't exist anymore yeah, and there's nothing true. that you can do about it and you pining about it is not going to change it. Absolutely not. And that, that shows with... It's a fucking ridiculous number. Three in four university graduates find it really difficult to get a job even after six months. So that's a damning figure. And and I, I agree with you in the sense that look, the way our economy is moving, this is gonna get a this is gonna get a look, this is my understanding of where we're moving. Pretty soon, within the next twenty to thirty years, it's already happening, but there will be a few people that will own technologies that will be so intellectually copyrighted that you're not, and they wouldn't need that many workers. So the only way you can truly survive or like make a living would be um, to come up with something new yourself, to come up with some sort of an idea, some sort of a business venture. If you're thinking that I'll educate myself and I'll be a hard work and then I'll work for some company and I'll do some repetitive kind of job, and I'll have a house, a car, and a wife, and one kid, and a dog, that might not actually pan out the way you think it might. Like, you would have to adapt your... you. This is the biggest point, I think, in my opinion. You need to be willing to adapt and change very, very rapidly. It's that thing, you know how they give off that, like, um, there's... I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Jordan Peterson who was saying it. That let's say there's a guy that has who has a uh, ambition of climbing the tallest mountain in the world. They go two thirds up, and then they realize, oh shit, there's a dead end over here. Either I can continue to move, or I go all the way down and find a new way to climb back up. You need to be the guy that has the balls to say, I'll climb back down and climb back up if that's what it takes. Mm. That's that's being adaptable. And I think that's the key point. If you are able to do that, if you're willing to unlearn things and relearn things, you will be successful and you will be fucking rich. Richer than... Miss, did you write that quote down? Which one? The Charles Darwin one? Yeah, oh, I did. I know, oh, I took a photo of it. Can you find it? Because yeah. I can't remember what it was. Well, but that's yeah, exactly the Darwin's what quote is like... Uh, it, uh, his quote was, nations that are the strongest don't survive. The ones that are able to adapt... Uh, survive the longest yeah it's not the most intelligent species or the strongest species that survive it's the, the ones that are most adaptable. responsive to change most responsive that's to an change. and i think that that's the whole thing you just need to identify as what ali was saying we really are going into an era of uh you know haves and haves nots on crack that's happening now and i think that also the other thing i truly do believe this after being a business owner for a long time there's actually a lot of personal growth that comes with a business. It taps, it forces you to tap into something in yourself. And like, there's months where you're just like, fuck, how am I going to pay people's wages and shit like that? But like, it's a different type of stress to the stress of like, am I going to get fired? Like that, that thing of just being like, I need to fucking figure out a way to provide. It actually makes you a better person. I think it also gives meaning to your life. Let's say in the future, Let's say the, the greatest thing happens, right? Everyone gets a universal basic income. Let's say you don't work at all because there's not that many jobs. You still get your needs met. Your needs met, not your wants. And then there are people that have... So if you think that, oh, I could just be that guy that does nothing. Even if you're satisfied financially, you will never be satisfied emotionally in that situation. In order to be a fulfill... If you, if you want to have a life that's fulfilling, you need to have a sense of purpose. Mm. So you need to actually, for your own happiness, you actually need to work really hard. Otherwise, you know, you become that Scandinavian person that has like the best society, but only wants to kill themselves, you know? 
Mm. Apparently, the highest rates in, uh, in 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 the world, highest suicide rates in the world, are in Scandinavia, and it also happens to be the sickest society in the world. So, mm. 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 you need to find a purpose, and working hard usually does it. <laughs> yeah, I really do think that there is something to it. I do understand the plight of the small businessman now, but like. There's something, it's just, dude, I'm telling you, it's the exact opposite of uh, working in the ABC, this job. It keeps you more mentally alert because, again, you have to be responsive to change. You can't just sit there and be like, I'm going to think about a documentary. For, if, if I thought about a fucking documentary for six months, I'd be bankrupt. I'd be bankrupt after like two weeks. <laughs> You know, you have to be constantly thinking and doing it. It actually makes you smarter. It makes you more, like, I don't know, it's just a nice feeling knowing that you're a lot more malleable than your competition. As in, if anybody from the ABC tried to do what I do, they'd fall on their ass in a day. Like, this is the result of hustle for seven years, you know? I, I do think that there's nothing dirty about it either. It's, it's not the easy way out, but it's the best way out, really. This is really, I think this is really what the economy is saying as well. We are moving into an age, I think that the economy was set up so that there was a bunch of factory workers. What people don't understand now, and this is just some real, like, uh, you know, entrepreneur babble that you will hear on a bunch of those channels, but <laughs> the economy is looking for entrepreneurs now. <laughs> but it is. Well, it really it's is. It's looking yeah. for people that are like, can you innovate? Can you make me something better than someone else? That's what it's looking for. Essentially, uh, but yeah. Anyway, what, what's the uh, what's the audience's thoughts on this? Uh, the audience pretty much agrees. They're saying Ali's immigrant is coming out, <laughs> um, but no, the, they they are uh, don't live to work, work to live. That helps. Mm. It makes your uh, effort and sleepless nights uh, weirdly enjoyable. You know that thing of um, uh, have you seen Jiro Dreams of Sushi? That Netflix show where the Jiro, who's this like ninety five year old sushi. A uh, chef who even dreams of sushi, even though he works twenty hours a day making sushi. Mm. Mm. That is really cool if you want to be the best at something, but it really helps if you like making sushi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, that. All right. So how about we move on to a, a lighter topic? Um, I think this is a known thing, but this is becoming more and more evident. Did you know that because of pollution, particularly plastic pollution, penises are shrinking? In fact, not only that, this is, this is a true fact. This is cons It should be concerning. People always, men's health is always a joke, but this is true. Particularly in the Western world, sperm counts of all men has dropped by 50% than what it was this, 20 to 30 years ago. You're getting this Ask Jeeves? Ask Jeeves. Dude, I don't know. I can't Maybe right. your sperm count's still on point, but this is a serious, serious issue. So what, if 50%. we looked at your sperm... There'd just be like three or four Ali's in there, one with three eyes going. Probably, probably. Why do you think we 50%. have so many more? Um, back in the day, you used to be, uh, Wait, couples used to be able to conceive so easily. Now IVF, surrogacy are way more prevalent. Well, that's one of the studies. They're, they've, they've actually formed a link between particularly plastic, certain kind of plastics. They say that um, if, if, you get, if you consume that, particularly like in terms of toys for babies, it, it mimics um, certain estrogen qualities that tricks your mind into thinking, oh, wait, there's too much estrogen, so... Soy. So I guess you, you become a soy, soy boy. Soy. Right. But that's soy. Your, and that's having an effect on literally your physic, not just your sperm count, but like your physicality, uh, your penis is getting smaller progressively. Wait, wait, wait. There's a difference between your penis getting smaller and a lower sperm count. Both of those are issues linked to the same thing, but I'm saying even physically your penises are now getting smaller. Well, from kids eating plastic toys. Everyone consuming or being around plastics. Shit. Because they say microplastics are in a lot of food now, right? Well, Is that what you mean? I'm not surprised by that at all. I'm, I think certain... I'm pretty sure Mexico cooks plastics, dude. Like, I've seen them cook weird shit. Like, do you know how often Cactus. they use Coca-Cola as an ingredient for food? Yeah. Coke. They'd be like, yeah, yeah Coca-Cola. They'd be like, uh, and what the stir fry needs is just one liter bottle of Coke. My favorite ingredient. That's not an ingredient. No. That's a junk food diabetes. that you keep for like Macca's only. Yeah. 
It's got to be the microplastics. That's that's a. Yeah. Uh, that's so not good. Well, but do you think it's that's a good thing? And uh, I don't know, Jordan. Like you would, you would say that. Well, less sperm count means less kids, and that means less population. So maybe it's not a bad thing. Yeah, especially because it's probably happening in the third world the most, right? Because no, it's happening. Are just plastic. It's happening in the Western world the How most. Are they getting How? away with it? Because how's that? I think I think it, it, part of it also has to do with in the. Look, when I look at Pakistan, right? When I was growing up over there, sure, there was a lot more plastic on the streets. There was way more uses of plastic. But you know what we were eating? Non-processed shit. We were mostly eating fresh vegetables. We were mostly eating really fresh meat. A lot of our stuff was super fresh. And that's because those like super capitalism forces when everything has been commodified hasn't taken over mm. nearly to that level. You're still peasants. We look at our stuff. Most of our stuff is really processed. Our foods, even our vegetables. You look at our vegetables. Our vegetable looks fucking perfect. You look at a, you look at an apple at Coles. It looks so beautiful. It's huge. Like you can tell that some guy wearing a, a white coat made this apple look so good. You go to fucking Pakistan. They're like small. They, they're flavorful, but they don't look nearly as good. Mm. And I think that's how apples are supposed to be. Mm. They're mm. not supposed to be so good looking. Like we've we've. Kind it's of, not GA, they're modified, aren't they? It's not GMO. Well, yeah, look, there's a definitional issue over there. There's it is genetically modified, but not in the same way as like Monsanto is doing it. They're genetically modified in the sense that they keep breeding the best looking apples together, give them the yeah. environment that is optimal, and give them like introduce like um, certain uh, fertilizers that would turbocharge them. Like, just look at a normal chicken. You know, a normal chicken's lifespan was supposed to be 10 to 12 years in the wild. We eat chickens after 80 days. Can you imagine the work that would have gone into making that chicken develop in 80 days? How long is it supposed to be? A chicken lives for like 12 years or in the wild was supposed yeah, to live for 12 years. Yeah. So it, it really should have been, it really should have been like Shit. an adult chicken fit for consumption should have at least taken a year and a year and a half. But there's a difference We're between, doing it in 80 days. But there's a difference between genetically modifying something and plastics. That's what I'm saying. That there is, that, that's why I don't want to get into that definitional thing. So this but, isn't but, about genetically modified, but I'm, th I'm saying all of this is playing a role yeah. into it. It's like Chem climate change. Like if there's a flood in Australia, can, you can't point directly at it and say that's caused by climate change. It might not be. It might just be a cyclical thing. But if you look at the entire thing, I think there's a lot of factors that are really playing into this. And I think processing foods. But uh, do you think that it's probably better off in the long run? I really don't think so. You don't? In terms of population control, maybe. That's an evil way to control a population. But that's, I think you're going to live longer with diseases. You're going to die more painful deaths. Because of the plastic. Because of the plastic. Because, you know, oh, it's increasing. I thought that we'd just give birth to babies that really were baby borns. Wouldn't that be incredible if someone actually does give baby birth to a plastic doll? There's so much plastic. Jesus. I, mean, I don't know if that's how biology works. I don't think it does. But maybe but it's just like a, the plastic doll has Charles Darwin's head on it being like. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like, dude, don't you think that even in terms of the uh, genetically modified stuff, uh, it's kind of just turning into that. Uh, how we could just continue to be nomadic and 150 acres could support 150 people. Or you could go to corn and it would support a 1,000 people, but their life expectancy would drop by 30%. So yeah, and so is the, the question quality of life or quantity of life? But they say that... Quantity the of life... Ironically, quantity of life is quality of life, isn't it? No, I don't think so. I would rather die at like 65, walking about, if someone told me, now you can live till 80, but you're going to be like Bed in ridden. pain. I would it depends how much because I'll claw on to the dear dead end. If someone said you can have an extra second of life, but I'm going to poke you with this searing hot rod, I'd be like, let's do it. Yeah, it was worth it. And the funny thing is that extra second, all you did be just, just like rehearsing Kill a me. script. What? Just needlessly rehearsing a script that you'll never release. Just be like, <laughs> barrel alarm. Oh, I did it. Ah. Fat Dyke on crack uh -oh. makes a good point over here. And John Barillaro's. And John Barillaro's like dead family members are like the gatekeepers to the pearly gates. <laughs> just, just be like, how, you didn't believe in us, dude. How ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
But what do you reckon? Would you do that? Do what? You've got 15 extra years, but you're kind of like hobbling around crippled. Uh, it depends, like, the level of pain. What do you mean hobbling around crippled? Like, what? one of my okay. legs is a bit... Each step you take is painful. How painful? Pins and needles painful. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I like pins and needles. Little. You <laughs> like it? Like, they're kind of You're fun. You're free. They're kind of fun. They're like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah? Well, you do actually like it. Variety. Yeah. I'd probably so go different for, types of pain. Yeah. Yeah. Different types of pain I'd hang on. I, I, I definitely feel like I'm like the I want more life fucker. Yeah, so I'd too. probably hang I'd probably <laughs> hang on. But you know, if someone's like 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 searing me with a hot cattle prod, like, no, that's not gonna be fun. You can't like eat a bowl of fur. It's like, ah! like that's not gonna work, you know. Hey, what the- about every now and then like a demon and you don't know when? You'll just be walking around and then he just crawls up your anus. How every big? now and then, like once every six months somewhere. How big is he? It, like you'll feel it, you know? Come on. <laughs> Variety. <laughs> Variety. Bring it on. At this point. We all know Ali would say yes. At this point, yeah, I, 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 all of a sudden I, he's up to 80. Yeah, at this point, hey, I'm wishing This is something it. you'd be interested in, Jordan. The spontaneously, our Twitch audience is doing a poll on Jordy should do more of what? Option A, RBT videos. Option B, COVID truther freakouts. Option C, laughing at boomers on Facebook. And option four, MAF, maths. Um, and currently, laugh, laughing at boomers on Facebook is winning by a big margin. Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. I don't know why I interrupted the pod, and also you guys spontaneously did it, but... All right, this is your introduction into searing pain sporadically over six months. I don't think it's going to... Try, try it not Your hand is so sweaty. Yeah, exactly. Why are you sweating? Like are you nervous? Like a warm clam. <laughs> Why? No, I don't know. I don't Why know. are you sweaty? I don't know. Shit, it's the plastic. Shit, now look at that. He's a very sweaty man. What's going on? I mean, let's see your pits. You all right? You feeling that? How's that looking? I'm probably tired. I mean, from, it could have been better. I'm tired from all your gas bagging. That's probably it. Gas bagging? <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, look, <laughs> moving on to- Wait, e- wait, wait. Can I just write that down there? Yeah, yeah. But uh, Laughing okay. at boomers write online. It down on it's this. one. I think it's laughing one. Laughing at boomers on Facebook has one. It's with one. 61%. Holy shit. That, 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 that was- uh, That won by 10, A 10 huge, times. Huge margin. Huge margin. Huge margin. All Sorry right. about this, the Stig. But this is what I think of your work. <laughs> <laughs> the Stig. Can you put the, no? Uh, oh, oh. oh my god! <laughs> Far out. All right. May as well have just eaten my silver bars. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> probably be worth less than that. Yeah, yeah, it would be worth less. Can All you? Right. Uh, can you just put that in your wallet there, Missy? Yes, sir. While we're actually no, I've got something even better. You want me to take a photo of it? Put it oh, in the now that's map. Now that's, Yar. that's I synergy. Have mentioned, I should have just done it afterwards. Okay, let's move on to something that's really concerning and way more heady. Shooter Williamson got punched during a live show. What? Oh, you didn't know this? No. So apparently uh, some heckler- Actually, I'm not surprised at all. I'm think, more surprised that he isn't punched in every show. I think he, I know so who this he is. is. This is oh, you know, uh, he, <laughs> how do you not know who Shooter is? And he's thinking of Chris Tucker. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Shooter McGavin. <laughs> from <laughs> no, he's thinking of Yosemite Sam. Remember that guy from Looney Tunes? Be like, <laughs> yes, that is a real comedian. I don't want to scare you, but he glitched. He got punched by one of his audience. I was pissed off. So he was. Uh, Shit. He, he do? was. He was doing his bit or whatever. You've collabed with him. Some, have you? You've collabed with him. Yeah, right? several I think times. I have. I, I, can I just get on the record? Pretty sure he's a meth head, but he's hey, the nicest meth head hey, I've ever met in my life. Hey, he's, he's a nice guy. No, I, that's what I, I'm <laughs> saying. He's a legend. That is They're honestly- They're not mutually exclusive. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, look, when I've gone to his stand-up shows and I've gone to a couple and really enjoyed them, I highly recommend them. But that guy knows a little too much about dry culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's but, a knowledgeable uh, man. He's a knowledgeable man. Maybe he's just worldly, but- he, uh, I've got to say, there's two people that everyone's always like, they are fucked, fuck them. And I always hear people bagging them out. It's Isaac Butterfield and Shooter. Ironically, mm. the biggest legends in the game. Mm. They are solid dudes. Hell yeah, and I they'll do favours for you. you know? I want to- like yeah. they'll, 
I can see why. I want to. I want to give off. I want to give an observation that is a personal observation of mine, and uh, I think a lot of immigrants would agree with this. You know those people, and, and Miss, you would appreciate this fact too. And I swear, hand to my God, I swear to Allah, this is true. Mm-mm. The people that you normally meet in your day to day life that have like really controversial opinions, like yeah, fuck, I hate these libs. You know those guys. In my particular opinion, end up being really nice people and they actually do a lot more for you than someone that's like oh my god i love immigrants like i love i wish that we were more diverse those people usually end up dogging you people that you assume would be really bad and are straight up they're upfront about their ideas are actually end up being the nicest people and this is not one instance this is as a general rule this is what i've experienced in australia yeah, case in point lithgo uh, Actually, we've got our own test tube right here. Well, I was just going to say you can simplify it that simplify it to country versus city. I reckon it's not even country versus city. City people. I, that's just a. That's honestly, that's a general rule. But yeah, I always think that that's the case. You always see these people that uh, the media just completely shuns and say are the absolute filth of society. It's the exact opposite way around. Press are the complete filth of society. <laughs> and these people that, like, you know, <laughs> say some racy jokes every now and then, they'll yeah. fix your car. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. Don't you yeah, reckon? Yeah. Even if you no, said that, to one of these ABC true, yeah. officials, hey, can you get my NRMA insurance number out of my wallet? <laughs> You'll just get back six hours later. Oh, sorry, I didn't see the test. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a class divide, eh? And, and the other thing that they do not yeah. stand... Because their entire p- philosophy in life is, now nah, everyone should be treated the same. There's no special favours. So if they see an immigrant or someone actually face injustice, they get super angry at that. They're like, fuck off, nah. Because their whole thing is everyone should be equal. So if they actually see something going bad, they take it really personally. They become like Clint Eastwood and like, mm. I'm a Republican, but you do not mess with Koreans like that unless you're going to face the barrel of my gun. Now, yeah. you Koreans, stop making stupid spaghetti or noodles. It, it, it really annoys my nose. <laughs> Look, that's so true. I remember once I was in the western suburbs and my car had broken down and a guy that was clearly dealing drugs and in that kind of voice like this, mm-hmm. he was just like, oh, are you tiny? And I said, no. He said, Fuck, are you then? He was like really up front. And then I was like, oh, my car broke down. He goes, eh, pop the hood. Yeah, you should be good to go, mate. All right, yeah, have a good time. That's sick. That happened. That's sick. That's never going to happen in the eastern suburbs. Not That's not true, actually. That happened to me in the eastern suburbs. What a junkie. <laughs> not a junkie, but like some like... One exception to the rule is I reckon the skinny, energetic Kiwi men are great. Because I, I, my car but broke skinny, down... Skinny, energetic Kiwi men are just sheep shearers from New Zealand. Yeah, well, sheep Also, shearers. we got some hate for that from the last part, too. What, a lot the of Kiwis like were saying that we uh, our take on the New Zealand situation wasn't bad. So this is my what, thing. T- shut up about take first off. But what, what, what are we? Did we even mention New Zealand? I feel we like did. We were saying that they were they were the getting New Zealand. <laughs> they were saying we were getting deported. Uh, like the New Zealand uh, Kiwis were getting deported. And shit. But this is what we can do. Uh, one of these <laughs> podcasts will get like a, a Kiwi to call in and explain their gripes, so that you know it's fair for their everyone. gripes. Yeah, whatever the gripes, their gripes. Are. Well, we're going to turn it into the Kiwi grievance hour. Well, we can do it for I'm like kind of excited not hour, that. ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> but okay, uh, Shooter small Williamson thing. For a small country. I want to get. So what happens is Shooter's doing his bit. Some guy keeps heckling, blah blah blah. Shooter gets really pissed off, takes his beer, pours it on this guy's head because he's right at the front. The guy gets on stage. Huh. Shooter thinks that he's. Shooter gives him like the mic and says, "All right, like I put beer on you, so you." Deserve a right of reply, <laughs> and uh, and See, he takes you, gentlemen. He takes the beer. Shooter shooter thinks that he's gonna pour the beer on his head, so he's like ready to just drink it. That was his gag, but instead of the guy pouring beer, he Glassed. just punched the shit out of Fuck, him. At least he didn't glass him. That would not have been. Fun. I can't. I don't know where this punch was. the shit is in once or one punch, but and then pummeling. and then like a bunch of people came in and took him away. Who everyone assumed was security, but it was just a bunch of shooters fans. <laughs> Put him in a hole. So this guy like ended up being like the egg boy. He's like, you, you, you fucking punch shooter. It was probably the exact wow. guys that were restraining egg boy. <laughs> yeah. Don't you reckon? Hey, that shooter, show some respect. <laughs> did he? Did he? Did he go down? 
I could because it's I don't I haven't seen the video. I don't know if there nah, even is. Don't a you reckon video, if there's one thing that shooter can do, it's take, take a, a punch. punch. I think he took I'm a punch. I'm just wondering it how was, hard of a punch. Is his, his fucking uh his his ear was blue because he punched him <laughs> yeah, on the dude, side. That's a that's a that's a hard punch, and he can take it. It seems there dude, you go. And people said Rodney Roode had it tough. Rodney Roode hasn't been beaten on stage. Well, fuck. We don't know that for I a fact. I kind of like... Uh, he probably did, yeah. actually. Because I've seen he him was taken off stage by cops once. That I know. He's saying he's penis. Pretty ballsy, cops. wasn't it? I can't remember what he was saying, but... He just, like, Cops hey. take it off, and then... He was doing his... You know what it was? It was that skit that he had of being like, uh, Don't you hate it when you forget that you've got a condom on... And then you piss and it fucking explodes everywhere. Uh, uh, just it's like a bunch of don't you hate it when? Just doing all of that. Probably would be like don't taking you off hate Netflix. it when your missus says you pull out, you get too excited, and you accidentally come in your eyes. Like, oh, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> like all of that. Fuck. And then uh, the cops come on. How baller is this? The cops come on and drag him off. He wrestles away. <laughs> this is a comedian. Wrestles away, grabs the mic and says, don't you hate it when the cops are trying to drag you off me, child? <laughs> <laughs> now there's a man. There's a comedian. That was devoted to his art. Yeah, dude, there's a comedian. Don't you reckon? That's True amazing. Hero. That's amazing. <laughs> still on. So good. Getting arrested, still on. I don't know why they didn't put him on a fucking coin. They really should, shouldn't they? Yeah. No, he should be like, on the hundred dollar bill. That's how valuable he <laughs> yes. is. People hate and you press a little button and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> nice drug dealer, Manny Cant. <laughs> Rodney Roode still has a uh, Kyle. Finally, some common sense. People, most people still hate Rodney Roode, right? Who? No, I don't know because I think you know how people, how like uh, boomers hate Kyle mm. from Kyle and Jackie O. But look. The boomers we hang out with, yes, but you do realise that the vast majority of their audience is mums. What boomers do you hang out with? <laughs> boomers that I hung out with 10 years ago. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Now gotcha. I am the boomer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, 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 you're not the boomer. Boom, I thought boomers loved him. No, some people, I, if you're an ABC Who crowd boomer, him, you then? hate him. Who listens to if him? If you're like boomers. Lithgow boomer, you probably love him. I'm guessing that's Who, how Kyle? It I feel like that's no, the mainstream. No, uh, Rodney like. Rude. Oh, Rodney Root or Kyle? Well, both you know of them have the well? same I'll thing. A lot of I people hate them. Before, but, them. Uh, I'll tell you who else likes him. Comedians. Well, comedians can't hate other... But wanky comedians that are on the ABC. I think Judith Lucy has nothing but good things to say about Rodney Root. She's just like, Judith. that's the GOT, you know? Yeah. But that's- you know, now she's saying that. In hindsight, Rodney Root has, has that reputation of a man that got cancelled for speaking up against authority. But I bet you uh, Judith Lucy, when it was happening, was probably like, nah, get him off. He's too crass. See, this is the whole thing. This is what we were talking about last... I'm really obsessed with this at the moment, that there's a divide. There There really is just artists and propagandists who call themselves artists. And I think that anybody that's in the creative industries and they're just constantly reinforcing whatever the fuck flavour of the day thoughts there are, propagandists. That's what was sick about Rodney Roode. Rodney Roode was doing things back then that only RSLs would allow him to do. Everywhere else was like, oh, my God, he said the word penis. (gasps) Now he's talking about sex. Mm. You know? He was there pushing the boundaries. Yeah. He was normalising that on the front line. You are the new Rodney Roode. Let's let's just call it. Let's, Let's... Shooters, the new Rodney. Oh, okay, Shooters, maybe. The, yeah, yeah. Dude, the guy got fucking punched on stage. True. He deserves a title. I'm Rodney check him Rudy. out. I'm gonna give him a pr- proper chance. Like every time I've seen his stand up, it seems to be, it's only it's only sort of snippets, but it seems to just sort of be like. And another thing about very specific regional pubs, I'm just like, yes, yes, I do appreciate that. I was just at four hours. I'm gonna go to the loo real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't seen it. So I, I'm just jumping the gun. but uh. All right, look, one more thing. This is a bit of a gossip for those of you out there. Did you know Koshi was not invited to Samantha's farewell lunch? Ooh, what a mole. Why? <laughs> well, Koshi doesn't know, but uh, all the pretty... So he was on Kyle and Jackie O, and he was saying, I just wasn't invited, and uh, uh, all the producers were invited. No. Apparently, uh, Samantha doesn't like him anymore. 
Why? It was what this advice because it was yeah. shitty advice about orange metaphors, remember? And banking. She read that and was like, nah, it's not doing <laughs> it for me. Use pears. <laughs> it's more appropriate. <laughs> Surely, but what could she it read be? it back to back. Saw Koshy's like, no. biz channel and was like, "The formatting's all wrong." <laughs> do you think that has something to do with uh, her thinking that Koshy got her off, or did she just leave on her own because she didn't want to? Is it, is it a well? No, but leave? I really don't know why the fuck she was there. I don't know why they. Re- I do know why she replaced Melissa Doyle, but I think it was the stupidest decision. Who re- uh, do you know the uh, the the lady who replaced uh, Samantha now? Yeah, Nat. Of course. Yeah. Is she is she good? No, she's. Mean spirited, just like Samantha was. The, the great thing about Mel was it was just like you're waking up to every nice Aussie mum in Australia mm. morphed into one person. That's that was true. what was sick. Very true. And then Koshy was kind of just like you're waking up to your uncle that you're not really sure if he's got dementia or not, but you're guessing he does. <laughs> Koshy, <laughs> Koshy, and Melissa could have never survived together for a long period. Why? You can't have two alphas in a room. It's kind of look. You know why they said that they actually got rid of them, and this is just so pathetic because I hated that dynamic. I thought it was, I hated it. They were looking at their research and they noticed that the audience liked Carl Stefanovic and fucking Lisa Wilkinson always bickering. They liked waking up in the morning listening to a passive aggressive domestic. That's what really got Australia going. But they they got along actually. Well. Wilkinson and uh, old mate got along. Like, they would take the piss out of each other. That's she had true a as well, but they used to always... Nah. Dude, no. Believe me. There's, I may or may not have watched the best of those two clips, like, yesterday. Is your man... Was some it commissioned by Pedestrian? I bet you it was. No, it was just YouTube. Yeah, they put that up there for sure. It was a Pedestrian. Well, so it was a fan. A fan just did a best I moment. So, yeah. Just watched every minute of that show. Dude, there are fans of... Carl uh, Stefanovic, there are fans. Look, I do understand the love because... You know, yeah, he well, is a funny... A, funny uh, a lot of salami is saying Koshi is too lefty, that's why. Is that is that well, plausible? You know what? what, actually, no, because you know what Armitage is? She's part of that Bunyip aristocracy. Right. She's from a really wealthy but. rural family, and that's why every time Cole Fitch Gibbon and uh, Barnaby Joyce are on, she just visibly, actively pans Joel Fitzgibbon and sits there just laughing at all of Barnaby's <laughs> jokes, being like, hey, jo- just let him finish, Joel. It's just a lot. It's, really? it's You're essentially watching Bill O'Reilly interview <laughs> Graham. What's that guy that is from the South and is clearly a closet homosexual? I don't What's know. Name? Graham something or other, you know? Uh, mm. Yeah, look, I... But it's very Fox Newsy what happens there. Yeah. It's true. Samantha Army, I don't know. I thought she was horrible. I really That's threw so the day that Mel was dumped for Sam. Because you're just mm. like too much of a Mel fan. That was the problem. I'm you're a team big fan Mel. of Mel. Yeah. Uh, and I wish her all the best. Do, raising her family. Is that what she's doing? I'm pretty sure she's a great grandmother now. Okay, she's very don't. old. Is she? Well, when we were teenagers, wasn't she just like, I'm having my 40th? I don't know. I just, I, she's just one of those people that's just like, you know. Look, as much as I love her, if I read in the newspapers tomorrow that she Melissa was Doyle died of heart failure tomorrow, I'd be like, well, it's about time. Yeah, she's a, she's probably very old. <laughs> she's not that. She can't she's be. Not she's not a grandma. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to put that on the record. I bet you we're going to walk down the street now and she'll be toddling along in a walking frame. <laughs> oh, we're in the wrong suburb for that, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But the Look, closest retirement home to here so would probably be that one that was shut down for COVID restrictions. <laughs> so is Koshi a lefty? Well, no, he's the, just a yeah. common lover of common sense. You know what he he's is? He's the OG member of the Common Sense Brigade. He's That's the OG he member is. of the Common Sense Brigade. And he's the OG Kevin Rudd fanboy. That's true. He inhabits that same space that Kevin Rudd does. Crazy. Of just like, let's look at the numbers. Oh, yes, they tell a story. Yeah, they? that's a nice change, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Look, Looking we, at the numbers. We're running a bit out of time. We had more segments. Uh, choose one of these. Um, s- how the energy companies are screwing over rooftop solar guys. Or um, uh, the quad. And uh, lastly, actually, yeah, one of those. 
What? Can't we just keep talking about how sick Rodney Roode is? <laughs> What's the we quad? Could, <laughs> but the is the quad like a new the block or something? Or Joe Biden. The quad. Joe Biden. One of the three. Well, purely for the algorithm, let's talk Joe. <laughs> so, J- Joe Biden, the, the <laughs> whole thing is, you know how Joe Biden recently launched uh, these um, strikes on Syria? and As he should. It's weird <laughs> how every uh, president that comes in has to prove their authoritarian, like has to prove their authority by bombing some country. Jesus. <laughs> like that's a requirement now. Trump, if you remember, did exactly the same. When he came in, he wanted to show how tough he was with ISIS. They dropped, I think one of the biggest bombs aside from a nuclear bomb in what? Afghanistan. Yeah, you've forgotten about that. Are but that was sure? the thing. I am Didn't he just light up some fireworks for that dude they killed? No. He dropped a big ass bomb, but Probably to Trump's credit, while doing that was watching the Fourth of July fireworks. Yeah, damn! I thought I would have read that, but uh, dude. But anyway. but like so. But the point is, like, why is that a thing that every and how so how bizarre. does that make Joe Biden any different True. in terms of his foreign policy? He's doing. He's playing the military the exact industrial. Same is anybody playbook. guessing anything else? Of course, that was what was going to happen. No, but then like there were a lot of these starry-eyed people that were saying like, if we get rid of Trump, the world will be a better place. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like that's because they're idiots. And the, one <laughs> of the biggest CNN point is the most refreshing thing about Joe Biden is having a president with empathy. Yeah, the military well, industrial complex has a lot of money. It has and a, lot of, a lot of bombs. Oh, here's drop. here's the other thing. Here's uh, sorry, I, I want to get this. Is this could be a hot take? But do you know how Joe Biden has projected this image of like I am an empathetic man, and if you are fleeing violence anywhere in South America, you can come to the U.S. That had caused a huge problem because there's a lot of economic migrants and people that are genuinely facing troubles that are now moving towards the south of the border. And people over there literally just like, we can't handle this many people. Which is why, you know, the whole thing about Trump keeping children in cages. They're still in cages, but with their parents now as well in those cages. Because the number, the sheer number of migrants that have come to the southern border is just batshit crazy. Damn, so Trump was right. So Trump was right. He was like, what he's doing on the border is unbelievable. It's disgraceful. I mean, it is it is a nice thing to do, but then when you've got someone that's favorable in the White House that is saying that I'm going to let people in, it makes a lot of people that weren't thinking of moving move. They're like, well, if we get a ticket to the US, then who hates Didn't that? They learned this from Cuba. Yeah, but uh, Reagan. So what you're talking about? Tell the story, Miss. Go on. So Reagan. <clears throat> Welcome. <laughs> so Reagan, I, I mean, you are, I'm sure you'll know about this, but from my understanding- You're acquainted with me, Slav, right? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. How's it going? I didn't get fired. Uh, He's one of the members, yeah. Uh, from my understanding, Reagan was like, I'm going to show you uh, Kami's all the way down there. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Fidel Castro. That's right, Fidel Castro. Uh, you, he started the speech with, uh, you know, they say- the great thing about figuring out which country's the best one to live in, just open up the borders and see where the people go. Well, today I'm going to open them up on Cuba, see if they want a nice slice of freedom pie. <laughs> and then Castro, being the boss he is, decided to send all the murderers, all the delinquents, <laughs> all the rapists, all the druggos, and all the... Insane Bums. people. That's not true. Yes, That's he did. Not true. Yes, he did. I've it, seen it might, have led, it might have led a lot of people. That's true, but like most of the people that moved to Cuba were part of the upper class that really suffered because all of their shit was taken by Castro. No, they might have left as well, but <laughs> I know for a fact that Cuba, that Fidel was sitting there just being like, eh, just release everybody in jail. Just put them on a bathtub. <laughs> because he said, this is one of his most famous quotes in history I have flushed the toilets of Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm god! I'm aware, of that. but that was that, there's oh like my, that's a fu- dude. That that's a funny. Man. There's a lot of optics in that too. And when he when he's, you know, let's say let's say you're Fidel Castro and you've just taken over Cuba, and Ronald Reagan has said anyone that's welcome to Cuba, and you see a lot of people leaving your country. The best optic spin is well, there are rapists that were going, so yay. Because you don't want to say, well, don't st- don't go, stay. Like, come on, this is going to be a good yeah. country. You don't want to be on that side. But come this on. is so controversial then when Trump was just being like, they're being in drugs, they're being in crime, and some, I assume, are good people. 
He's bang on about what happened in Cuba. <laughs> well, That's I, true. Maybe, maybe I'll rephrase this. He was common this. sense, man. We let him go. What were thinking? <laughs> Well, right, look, I, there's no way to salvage this because I know that particularly Miss Love has a very strong opinion on this topic. But I was going to say maybe maybe I'm framing the question wrong. Maybe instead of saying uh, it's causing a problem on the borders, I could say, well, maybe it's time for US to have a big ass uh, massive immigrant intake just like they did when Ronald Reagan was there and a bunch of Cubans came in. Or maybe not. <laughs> are all options <laughs> it's just the numbers game isn't it like it you know it is causing problems like because of pandemic uh my friend was telling me this because of the pandemic in australia usually we get like i don't know 150,000 migrants come in every year to australia last year during the 2020 we had 110 what that's meant is that there is a huge demand in all or corporate organizations for people like that can do coding that can do that so we don't realize and, and it's driven up the cost by a huge margin. So people that were getting paid $60,000 a year salary are now getting offered a hundred thousand dollars a year salary because of, um, because like there's just, there haven't been that many immigrants that have come in to do those jobs. So we almost sometimes forget how critical these immigrants can be in filling in key positions. All right, that's enough of you trying to convince me of Big Australia for one episode. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Slipping um, that in there. Try you... to get that in. Fuck. <laughs> Shameless. Globalist <laughs> is here. You the are globalist. a globalist, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 Alex I Jones warned me about you. <laughs> <laughs> he warned us about plastics, too, and that make us drink smaller. So he's Why are you listening there. to this podcast? Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Please become a patron. Go on Patreon slash Friendly Geordie's podcast. And you'll want to because the greatest segment of all time, and everybody talk about this in the chat if you are a member, we have Miss Love's Musings in <laughs> unit credit form. If you were hungry for more Carl Pilkington after that dreamboat ran, look no further. I'll tell you about Big Australia. And Big Dick Energy Australia. And for that one patron who messaged me saying, hey, I'm a patron and I really want to understand... Uh, I've noticed that there's an uptick on um, news uh, media uh, saying a lot of bad stuff about the Liberal Party all of a sudden, and I don't know why that is. Well, we're going to discuss that, but Jordan's going to be doing a video on that soon. Am I wrong? That's coming out right? on Friday. Check that so out. So check that out. That Friday. Your question will be answered it would have then. to be the most poorly articulated video I've ever done in my life because I was filming it and the whole time Christo was sitting back there shaking his head nervously. But <laughs> uh, it was it was hell to do that video. But uh, let me tell you, like, yeah, you wait on Friday because I have big news that I had to be extremely general about. But you get the the big picture, I guess. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, exactly. So wait for that. And uh, please become a patron. Uh, we really, all the money that you um, uh, contribute on Patreon, Patreon goes to the selfish trust of benefiting ourselves. And his electric car. And please, we really want to turn this office from a rented office into an office with a mortgage. We need <laughs> your money. Yeah, because we then we can money. put space colors on here. Yeah, and Come on, you guys don't want to see that? Do you know how long it took us just to take four posters off? Help us out. Help us you're out. You're very rude. If but you don't. But even if you don't, we appreciate <laughs> yeah, you either being Either way, you're rude. Yeah. No, look, even uh, if you don't, we still love we you. We still love you. We and still we really love you. Twitch you. is, you know, the internet's a crazy place. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Enjoy GTA, which is, I assume, what you'll be doing on your turn. Yeah, don't off. listen to Peter Dutton. Continue playing GTA. Thank you, guys, and listen, we'll see you next listen week. Listen to Peter Garrett. <laughs> Bye.